Hi everybody, this is Matthew Pose of Pose Acoustics and I'm answering questions. So I did a video on Bass Management 101 and I think I made a reference to the slopes and it, it, it led to a question. And the funny thing about this was that the question that's being asked here came up in a, in a meeting I had with the CDA folks for RP1, which is about manufacturers reporting. We were trying to decide how important we think it is that the base management capabilities are like a prime thing that you would, as a manufacturer, you would display. And I said, you know, I think it's more important than we give it credit for. So the question is, what determines which slope you choose when configuring a low-pass filter? I've heard so many different takes on this. Same setting in AVR and subwoofer, or 10 hertz above the AVR on the subwoofer. To use 12 dB slopes or 24 dB slopes, etc., is it a case of just measure with REW and see what works best? Actually, yes, probably, but let's go on. Or is there a method that can be applied to start from to get close in general? Yes, also, but let's talk about this. Thanks for all your helpful discussions so far. I appreciate your time. Uh, and this came from John Oz. I don't know if I pronounced that right. And he gave $5, so thank you very much for that. Okay, so the correct way to do it in anechoic terms, what happens in a room, a little bit different, but what in, in anechoic terms is that you would want to have a like Linkwitz-Riley fourth order crossover between the main speakers and the subwoofer. And to do that, what you would have is symmetric slopes, so not 10 hertz above it. So it'd be 80 hertz and 80 hertz, which means that at the crossover point at 80 hertz, it's actually minus 3 dB. It sums flat with a flat phase response then, and it's got a fourth order roll off. And that would help reduce, uh, that would mean that there's good phase tracking between these, it would act like a good speaker, and you would reduce the ability to localize the subs if they're not co-located with the speakers. That's the ideal of what you'd want to do. You got a problem though. Um, so most speakers have a natural roll off to them. Sealed speakers often start rolling off as high as 100 hertz, even when they're like big, like Perlison, for instance, the S7T can be sealed up. And if you seal up the S7T, you actually start to see some roll off as early as like 100 hertz. Um, it's just a little, it's like a slight shelving down. With the uh, S7Is, you definitely see that. With the towers, you, so maybe 100 hertz is the wrong, it's like maybe lower than that, but it's, it's not like it's flat to 20 hertz, it's not. But what happens is that the natural, um, sealed speakers get different benefit in rooms than ported speakers do, and you get more uh, benefit with the sealed speaker than you do with a ported speaker, and we can do another video on that to explain why, but it, it's a, it actually was just published even in, can't remember the magazine. It was a scientific article by Rene, uh, is a friend of mine who did it, and did comp cell modeling, did the math for it, and kind of explains why this is true. Anyway, so for the sealed speakers, you're going to get more benefit. You're basically going to have a second order roll off, and you get a second order boost, and it leads to a flat response to DC once you're below the first mode of the room. And you get some, you still get benefit above that too. With ported speakers, it just depends a lot on the port tuning, but you're generally going to get a pretty flat response to the port tuning, and then it's just going to shoot down at fourth order, sometimes even more. And um, so what if the port tuning of the frequency or the natural roll of, this, of the frequency of the speaker is 80 hertz? That's where it starts to do its thing, right? If you take a speaker that naturally rolls off at a second order slope, so sealed speaker, and you apply a fourth order high pass at the same frequency, you get a sixth order. So that's not ideal. But interestingly enough, you actually can take a sixth order high pass and a fourth order low pass and change the frequencies in such a way that you actually do get a flat response with a relatively smooth and flat phase integration. So it's not like if you did that, it's the end of the world. It still could yield good in-room results, but it would not be your ideal. The, now make it, let's make it worse. Let's say you have a ported speaker. So there are some smaller speakers from companies that are based using pro audio drivers with very high output, but they don't have a lot of bass. So to fix the problem that they actually don't have even any significant output at 80 hertz, they'll put ports on them and they'll tune them to around 80 hertz. Now you have a fourth order roll off. So what happens when you take a fourth order roll off and a fourth order roll off and you put those together? You've got the natural acoustic fourth order roll off. Now you've got an electronic fourth order roll off on the signal. You get an eighth order roll off. Well, you don't want that. So you've got this issue, which is you want to make sure that in the area where the speakers are coming together, that you've got a acoustic roll-off in room that matches what you need to get the results you want. One of the reasons why I don't love ported speakers that are tuned at like 80 hertz is that while I understand it's benefit for um, acoustic control, getting good integration with subwoofers is more tricky 
and it requires ideally asymmetric slopes, which not all processors support. And it requires um, uh, the ability to adjust. Is it a Bessel? Is it a Linkwitz Riley? Is it a Butterworth? So a Linkwitz Riley, for those who don't know, is two Butterworth second orders linked together like in series. So um, typical sealed speakers are roughly a, a second order, like a Butterworth type roll off. And so you do a Butterworth second order high pass to get that to fourth order Linkwitz Riley. And uh, with the ported speakers, you're going to get more like a fourth order roll off. And to make that stick the way you need it, what you actually need to do is apply a high pass filter that's below the tuning frequency by a pretty good amount so that that filter stays out of things. And then what happens is that in the crossover region where you want it, the natural acoustic roll off of the speaker hits the uh, electronic roll off that created the same acoustic roll off on the subwoofer to add as fourth order, fourth order, and you get nice bass tracking and a smooth response. And then below that point for excursion control issues, because the port is helping with excursion, but below that point, the speaker's just going to go crazy. So you have to have some sort of high pass. So if you want 80 hertz, then on a speaker like I'm describing, the subwoofer is 80 hertz, but that speaker is probably going to be 50 or 60 hertz. Uh, and it could be second or fourth order high pass. Either could potentially work. It depends a lot on how much XMAX that driver has and what it can really handle. But it's going to have to be a good maybe octave or close to an octave below. Um, so I hope that's helpful in understanding that piece of it. And to like, what you're really asking is, is it like second order or fourth order just depends on the speaker driver, which is why I like to have that flexibility. And if you don't have it, it actually can be hard to get everything to work right. Uh, in terms of using Roo, REW, that's actually the best way to do it. Um, if you've got no other way. So sometimes you'll have weird problems where like you measure in your seat and there's just this weird dip at 80 hertz and that's where your crossover points are. And it's like, in theory, everything should be fine, but it's not. Um, so you, what you can do is you can take a measurement without any slopes on it of the main speaker and then another measurement of the subwoofer without the main speaker. And REW has a tool, it's an alignment tool, and you can play around with it and figure out what's going on. And you can apply, you can actually use the DSP tool to apply DSP to it. So you can do a high pass and a low pass on the sub. And I've done this before to sh show people stuff. And then you use the alignment tool after you apply the DSP to it. And then you can figure out like what you need to do to get everything to work correctly. So you can figure out what slope and what kind of slope you want and at what frequency for the high pass and the low pass. And then you can figure out the uh, amount of delay that's needed for the uh, speakers to get the phase tracking good. And then you can go and apply that after the fact with your receiver or processor to the extent that it allows that. Like I said, not all are fully adjustable there, but they all should let you change the delay. And they often, they all let you change the crossover points. What's not always possible is to, to make them asymmetric. So often you're stuck with whatever the uh, receiver, like if you set it at 80 hertz, it's going to be symmetric 80 hertz. And that may not work. If it doesn't work, you can play around with that in REW, assuming symmetric slopes. Now, the other part of your question made me wonder if what you were saying was, are you supposed to set a crossover on the subwoofer itself separate from what the receiver has? And the answer is almost always no. There might be situations where you would do that, but there's very few for which you would do that. In all likelihood, what you're going to need to do is set the crossover point on the subwoofer to be the highest it can possibly be or if it has the ability to actually make it out so it's not even part of the signal path, all the better. You don't really want the subwoofer's own built-in crossover working unless you're using it as part of like a two-way system that doesn't have base management. If you're using a receiver with base management, you want the receiver doing its thing because then you've got that same problem I mentioned before. You get slopes on top of slopes, and that's going to make it really hard to get good phase tracking and, and really hard to get a nice smooth amplitude response too. So you want to get those crossovers out of there. Um, so hopefully that was helpful, uh, worth your $5. Thank you again. And I just want to say again, subscribe to the channel. Uh, it helps you to stay on top of these videos, but it also helps me to see what's going on, how interested people are, and if this is working and worth it. And the donation, same thing. You guys just help me. It, it makes it easier to justify putting time into these videos. I'm. This is a Saturday for me. I could be having fun with my family, and I'm sitting in a dark room in front of a camera talking to you guys. I'm doing like probably 10 videos and giving up many, it takes many hours to do even this with no B-roll and very simple. But you guys seem to like it and it's become a part of my business model. So I appreciate that. Thanks everybody, got more coming.